The Ryan FR Fireball was simultaneously a groundbreaking development and a terrible failure. This fighter was the first effort by the U.S. Navy to develop a jet-propelled aircraft during World War II. Eventually, it became the first fighter powered by a jet engine to land on a carrier. From the outside, the FR looked like nothing exceptional, but its looks betrayed its innovative technology, which combined piston and jet engines. This made the fighter more than capable of taking off from a carrier and chasing after kamikaze aircraft. The fireball could fly, climb, and pull away with its radial engine shut down. It could also land on a carrier with nothing but its jet engine turned on. For other pilots, the new technology seemed like magic. Despite its technological wonder, however, the fireball was late to the war. A thousand of them were ordered, but Japan's surrender after the atomic bomb limited production to only 66 fighters. The aircraft also earned the infamous nickname of the Widowmaker after several fatal accidents while landing on carriers. Catastrophic structural failures eventually led to the fireball being scrapped. Although the marriage of piston and jet engines was innovative at the time, all jet technology proved superior, and the fireball's career came to a quick end. In 1941, the United States started exploring the concept of jet-propelled aircraft. The British were already ahead, thanks to Sir Frank Whittle's invention of the turbojet. But these early engines weren't without some problems, like slow acceleration and high fuel consumption. Throttle changes were also complicated, and the engines proved to be unreliable. On October 2nd, 1942, the United States Army forces flew its first jet-powered aircraft, the Bell P-59A Era Comet. The Bureau of Aeronautics faced a dilemma, either continue having outdated planes in service or try for jet aircraft, which seemed to need long runways and were incompatible with carriers. In late 1942, the U.S. Navy finally joined the race for a jet-propelled aircraft. However, considering the issues with jet engines, they decided to pair it with piston-engineered technology. Under the direction of Admiral John McCain, the late Senator John McCain's father, the specifications called for a fighter with a piston engine that allowed it to take off from a carrier. The plane would also have a jet engine that would provide increased thrust for a faster rate of climb. Nine companies submitted proposals, and the Navy selected the design by the Ryan Aeronautical Corporation of San Diego. The decision came as a surprise, as the company had no experience in carrier-borne fighters. In fact, they were mostly known for their famous custom-built sports monoplane, the Spirit of St. Louis. Aboard this aircraft, aviator Charles Lindbergh became the first person to complete a solo, non-stop flight across the Atlantic Ocean. But the design of the Ryan Model 28 by Ben T. Salmon and William T. Immenskew generated a favorable impression. The company was granted a contract for three prototypes, and eventually an order for 800 XFR-1s. The fighter's classic design betrayed its innovative interior. The low-wing monoplane fit one pilot in the cockpit, located forward at the leading edge of the wing. The bubble canopy allowed the pilot to have excellent visibility while flying. The entire surface of the aircraft was covered in smooth metal that had been flush riveted. It could also carry four M2 machine guns and four rockets. Fed by the same fuel, the fireball was powered by a right cylinder radial engine and a General Electric I-16 turbojet. Other innovations included a laminar flow folding wing and a tricycle landing gear, unusual in carrier aircraft. This fusion of jet and piston made the aircraft more reliable than other jet-propelled planes. A piston engine alone could power the fighter at cruising speed for long ranges. As a result of its unusual power plant, the fireball was heavier and larger than other fighters, like the Grumman F6F Hellcat and the F8F Bearcat. The combination of engines gave it a weight of 11,652 pounds. 
On the other hand, the jet was highly effective for high-speed tactical situations. The Navy finally had a fighter that could climb at high speed while chasing down kamikazes, which were becoming an increasing threat. The first prototype was completed in only 14 months. It came without the jet engine, which was installed shortly after the XFR-1 made in flight on June 25, 1944. This model of the fighter completed two successful flights, but the tests uncovered some issues with the center of gravity and aerodynamic shaping. Twenty XFR-1s were built with these issues. Later that same year, Ryan delivered the second prototype of the aircraft. Its first and second flights were extremely successful. The transition between the piston and jet engines went without a hitch, proving to be perfectly compatible. The fireball could reach a top speed of 400 miles per hour and a cruise speed of 160 miles per hour on the piston engine alone. The fighter had a range of 1,600 miles and a ceiling of over 43,000 feet above any other aircraft at the time. However, the lucky streak of the aircraft was cut short on October 13, 1944. The first XFR-1 crashed during a test in the Naval Air Weapons Station China Lake. According to subsequent investigations, the fighter crashed due to weakness in the wing rivets, leaving them unable to resist compressibility effects in flight. Six months later, a second aircraft also crashed after the pilot could not recover a dive from 35,000 feet during a test flight. Weeks later, the third prototype crashed in Lindbergh Field as the plane's canopy blew off during a high-speed pass. Investigations concluded that the riveting along the wings couldn't maintain the needed stress resistance in any prototypes. In short, the wing structure wasn't strong enough. Future models were modified with double the wing rivets. Its Douglas double-slotted flaps were replaced with a single-slotted flap, and the plane was given a new tail with stabilizers. After the issues were fixed, flight testing at the Fireball restarted. In 1945, the aircraft took its first test aboard escort carrier Charger. These tests were a success. The fighter made five catapult takeoffs on its piston engine, and another three using both engines. It could also land on the carrier without any issue. After extensive testing, the fireball was finally ready to enter service. In March of 1945, the aircraft was introduced to Fighter Squadron VF-66, but it never saw combat. Three FRs were carried by the USS Ranger to carry out tests on deck, but two of them were seriously damaged during landing. Despite its technological innovation, the fighter came late to the war. The U.S. Navy placed an order for a thousand fireballs at the beginning of 1945, but that request was cancelled after Japan surrendered following the dropping of the atomic bomb. All the pilots and FRs were transferred to the VF-41 squadron. With the VF-41, the aircraft made history. On November 6, 1945, it became the first aircraft to land with jet power on a carrier. Previously, the pilots landed with only the piston engine turned on. But that day, the radial engine failed on the fighter as it was approaching the carrier Wake Island. Moments before hitting the crash barrier, the pilot managed to turn on the jet engine and successfully land the plane. Pilots were pleasantly surprised by the fighter. Despite its common-looking exterior, pilots could form upon another aircraft and continue flying with the radial engine off. It could also climb or pull away like that, impressing those who witnessed what seemed like magical technology. Their reviews placed the fireball higher than other Navy fighters that were operating in the Pacific. However, only 14 out of 22 trained pilots managed to complete the six required takeoffs and landings on a carrier. They would often crash the nose gear into the deck after the plane had landed. The fireball was transferred to the escort carrier by Rocco in March of 1946, but issues with the nose gear persisted. 
That year, the aircraft suffered three fatal accidents. In one of them, the pilot collided with the target banner and then crashed into the water. In another one, the wing of a fireball broke off while doing a barrel roll and slammed into another fireball. Both pilots were lost during this accident. These series of unfortunate accidents led pilots to dub the aircraft the Widowmaker. The men were extremely reluctant about flying the fireball, even after redesignating it VF-1E for publicity's sake. Fireballs were withdrawn on August 1st, 1947. It was discovered that the aircraft couldn't withstand multiple carrier landings, as several of them came apart when landing hard from a high angle of approach. Soon after, the fighters were scrapped. The fireball may have failed as a fighter, but it was very successful as a test platform. Based on the aircraft, Ryan developed the XF-2R Dark Shark, which also combined turboprop and turbojet propulsion. Unlike the Fireball, the Dark Shark had a four-blade propeller system and a pointed spinner. This new model had a General Electric T-31 turboprop engine instead of the piston-driven one in the Fireball. This was meant to improve the performance of the aircraft as the turboprops ran at constant RPM. The engine added 500 pounds of thrust to the 1,600 pounds of thrust provided by the jet engine. The XF-2R had its maiden flight in 1946 with positive results. The power changes of the aircraft were instantly evident and suggested that the model could still be useful for carrier operations. However, by that point, the Navy was only interested in all jet aircraft. Only one Dark Shark prototype was produced. The U.S. Air Force remained interested in the fighter and considered it a potential competitor for the escort fighter consolidated Vault XP-81. They ordered two XF-2Rs, with a J-34 turbojet mounted in the tail and air inlets in the fuselage sides. The Air Force's XF-2R2 had a top speed of over 500 miles per hour and was considered extremely reliable thanks to its two gas turbines. But progress on the development of other jet aircraft led the program to be cancelled before the fighters were produced. Still, the Dark Shark set a world altitude record for turboprop-powered aircraft after reaching 39,160 feet on May 2, 1947. The Dark Shark also managed to exceed its predecessor speed by 75 miles per hour. The Fireball and the Dark Shark were attractive and capable fighters. Still, the all-jet aircraft proved to be consistently superior. Nowadays, only one Fireball remains in the world. It's kept by the Plains of Fame Air Museum of Chino, California. 